Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop. This is Thursday, October 10th. Hurricane Milton made landfall last night and moved across the upper portion of the Florida Peninsula as a devastating hurricane. Let's look at the map first of all from the uh, uh, tropical uh, weather outlook and the National Hurricane Center there you can see the path that uh, Milton took as a very powerful hurricane over here in the southern Gulf of Mexico it was a category five then a four making landfall with about 115 mile an hour winds last night near Sarasota uh, over at Siesta Key and it moved across the center portion of the peninsula of Florida uh, just almost along Interstate 4, uh, then moving offshore just north of Melbourne around Titusville this morning, and then now is out in the Atlantic Ocean. Still a hurricane with 80 mile an hour winds, but it's moving away. And uh, that's the good news. Looking at the national radar summary from across the southeast, uh, showing most of the precipitation now is gone. Still some showers flowing across the coastal areas of, of uh, upper parts of northeast florida but all in all that system is continuing to move away but it has left a mark looking at the power outages across florida massive power outages ongoing right now you can see uh, a large portion of the peninsula of florida has uh, widespread to scattered power outages over three million people without power right now in across the peninsula of florida all right Let's look at what Milton did last night rainfall wise and this is almost unbelievable. Uh, looking at the Melbourne radar, radar summary, uh, this is the estimated precipitation from the uh, Melbourne uh, radar and it shows a swath of extremely heavy rains across the uh, central portions of the Florida Peninsula just about along Interstate 4. Let's zoom in on that and look at some of these rain totals. It's, it's a, a very impressive. Over here around uh, the Polk City area, uh, see rainfalls over 14 inches estimated by radar there. Over here by Bay Lake, uh, the rainfall rate there, a rainfall total there was about 16 to 17 inches, almost 18 inches, I think, in some locations there, 17 um, 17.5 17.6 very heavy rainfalls there it will zoom in on that we'll just see right for certain here and uh that year 18 inches estimated rainfall and most of that came down in about a 12 hour time period and uh, that rainfall um, total goes all the way up to new smyrna beach into uh, port orange daytona beach and ormond beach uh again over uh 14 inches of rain, in this case there, uh, almost 16 inches of rain. So extensive flooding, obviously, just from the rain itself. Uh, looking at the conditions now, uh, we are seeing the satellite imagery showing the storm itself is now well east of the uh, upper portions of Florida, moving away. Still some clouds skirting across the South Carolina and Georgia coast, actually mostly Georgia coast, but mostly, uh, mostly sunny skies continue across a large portion of uh, Georgia and South Carolina is still cloudy, though, across the hurricane-wracked area of uh, central and northern portions of Florida. Now, something else I want to show you here. This is the storm itself right now. Uh, looking at the past history, first of all, there you can see it made landfall uh, just south of the um, Tampa Bay area, and that produced a tremendous storm surge across the uh, southwestern coast of Florida from just south of Tampa down to the uh, Naples just about. But then as the storm moved off toward the east, northeast, it's now moved offshore. But here we are at uh, uh, around noon on today, uh, Thursday, and there you can see still strong circulation around this storm. That is producing a strong north-northeasterly flow of winds across the Atlantic off the, off the Georgia and South Carolina coast, and that is going to be holding up the tide, still producing blustery winds across the coastal areas of Georgia and South Carolina, where a tropical storm warning remains in effect due to the winds, particularly along the coast and on the islands and in the open waters. Obviously, uh, storm force winds out there, but then the storm continues to move east eastward and away and the winds will slowly diminish throughout the nighttime hours. But let's take a look at the tide because right now the tide is uh, coming up. It'll be high at about one o'clock this afternoon, uh, two o'clock this afternoon at 7.3 feet. And the tide is running about, well, earlier today it was running almost three feet above the uh, predicted value. It has settled down a little bit, but still is about a foot to foot and a half 
above predicted. It's probably going to get at least two feet higher, maybe two and a half feet. So we could see a 10 foot tide this afternoon between one o'clock and three o'clock this afternoon. Some of the uh, coastal roads near the marshes could have some water uh, overflowing on the roads at the time of the high tide. So keep that in mind. All right, let's take a look at the uh, uh, my weather site, uh, my website, uh, savannapat.name. And uh, here you can have the uh, conditions, uh, shows you where the storm is now. And over in the Atlantic, uh, the uh, uh, moving away eastward in the Atlantic, and of course the power outages. I want to look at one other thing. Some people were concerned about Hurricane Leslie out in the Atlantic Ocean. I want to put your mind at ease here. Um, the uh, storm Leslie right here is nothing to worry about whatsoever. Ever. It is over a thousand miles away from us and it's going to be moving off toward the east northeast. Let's take a look at the forecast path from the National Hurricane Center and uh, it shows the storm moving into the what we call the graveyard of hurricanes and it's going to be weakening and moving away. So, absolutely no threat from Hurricane Leslie for anybody. Uh, uh, so I'm not concerned whatsoever. And the rest of the tropical Atlantic basically is quiet right now, at least for the next seven to 10 days. I don't anticipate any tropical weather conditions. Still watching a little area uh, of concern over in the um, uh, Caribbean Sea, something might flare up over there in about 10 days from now, but we'll just have to keep an eye on that. The next name on the list is Nadine, but right now for at least the next seven days, uh, and this system over here, I'm not expecting too much out of that either, but um, we'll keep an eye on the tropics for you. But right now, uh, as far as uh, the rest of the uh, conditions go, it's going to be fantastic weather conditions for uh, southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina. Expect to see lots of sunshine. The winds will be diminishing uh, by late this afternoon, more so tonight. And then fantastic October weather for this weekend with highs in the middle 70s and lows in the low to middle 50s. Some areas may even see lows in the upper 40s. And then another cold front is going to come through uh, next Tuesday uh, with Monday getting into the middle 80s and Tuesday middle 70s. And then Wednesday, the highs only in the upper 60s under a mostly sunny skies with lows in the 40s. Yeah, well, it's October. All right. So thanks for watching and uh, uh, keep watching my webpage, uh, savannapat.name. Thanks. Bye.